Okay, hello everyone and thanks for coming to watch this video. Um, today we're talking about the Resonic FIC1, which is basically a replica, not a clone, a replica of the ISF1 input sample filter for the Ensonic Mirage. Um, first of all, quick shout out to those in the group who have helped me so much over the years. To name but a few, um, I'm going to say thanks to Giuseppe obviously. Thanks to Ewan, who has been really, really helpful to a lot of people too, and also to Robin for his work with Sound Process. There are so many other names in that group, it's a very positive group. Um, if you are not in that group on Facebook, I highly recommend joining it. If you have an Ensonic Mirage, I think it's Ensonic. There's a couple of groups on there, just join both of them. But yeah, it's um, a very positive atmosphere and a very progressive atmosphere, most importantly, um, with no kind of no bad overtones or anything, it's lovely, everyone's really helpful and very kind, so that's a good place to go to if you have a Mirage. Okay, so next of all, I'm going to talk about this filter, which I've been kindly gifted by Giuseppe because I sent him some parts for it in the early days when he was working on it. Um, during lockdown he couldn't get everything, so um, I sent it because I live in Taiwan. Now I'm going to quickly show you this filter. It's really high quality craftsmanship. Um, all the components, I know he's been particularly careful about what components he buys. Um, also, the sockets are the kind where they just stay in. I don't know how to describe these sockets, but the pins get jammed in there really tight and they can't, they can't come out at all. Or they probably wouldn't anyway, but anyway, yeah, it's that kind. Um, this uh, input cable here is um, strapped in well with some zip ties. Looking at the back of it, the solder joints are all really, really, really clean. It looks like a really nice kind of coloured white as well. It looks like a... It's almost a high kind of shade, but yeah, it's lovely. These look like they're going to last a long time. The board is particularly thick, thicker than other boards I've bought. So this is definitely a good replica. And I know we tried hard to find good PCB with uh, a good substrate kind of revealed there and being able to actually get all this done in such a high quality. He spent time doing that and it's really worth buying. I highly recommend getting it. It will probably last a very long time. So yeah, without further ado, what I'll do is I'll show you some samples um, that I've recorded today. And then I'll show you some um, <coughs> samples from the original filter that's inside the Mirage. And I'll show you some samples of, uh, that have come from this. And I'll also show you quickly now um, how it slots in the back. Um, it goes in the back by these components facing up, okay? So you just get it and you stick it in like this kind of thing. Um, then there's also um, something else I'll have to show you to do with the frequency range that this thing can sample. You're up to 50 kilohertz or 25 after the Nyquist theory is applied. That will come into play because <laughs> the Mirage does have its idiosyncrasies and it does kind of get a bit confused. I'll show you that later on, it's quite interesting actually how it works, but there is a hidden parameter that we need to talk about, um, which is parameter 93. So that's next up, cheers. Alright, so basically um, this is the most important thing you need to remember. First of all, you have to boot from MASOS, MASOS. I think it's Mirage Advanced Samplers Operating System or something. But anyway, it's um, I'm using version 2. If you use that, then you will be able to access this parameter, which isn't on the sample kind of card, the reference card, the quick reference card. There's a red or a yellow kind of section, ones for the sampling and ones for the envelopes and stuff. But basically, um, what you need to do is choose this 93 parameter, and then you press value here, and then you get... What says 5.0, and this is what I was talking about in the Nyquist series, it's really weird. Anyway, what you need to do is, that isn't going to work. You now need, this is really important, to go down, and you'll find it goes to zero. Now that would set it for the internal filter, all right? That would bypass the card. So if you're sat there, which, I mean, it might be useful if you want an A to B test it but uh, I doubt you do but anyway if you want to A to B test it like I'm about to do and show you samples with then yeah you sure you can do that otherwise if you want to open it up all the way now this is where it gets weird it only goes up to 2.5 it doesn't go back up to 5.0 all right so that's something that <laughs> there's always something fun with the mirage isn't there so anyway there's that um, then basically 
you can now sample at full frequency range. This is as good as it gets with the input filter card. It's, it doesn't get any better than this. All right, so this is wide open. Now for the purpose of this video, I have done all the uh, parameters as open. I've done all the filter as open. I've done the uh, sample time as good as it can get. So 73 now, if we go to 73 and I press value, that says 3.4, right? Now if I go down to, I can get two seconds, which is obviously going to be higher in quality than the internal filter because the internal filter will only go down to three seconds. Okay, so let's change that again. Let's go to 93 value and we'll change that down to zero. Now watch this. Whoa, it just went negative. So weird, right? So I think, I don't know what's going on with it. It's like it kind of, now watch what happens now if I do it again. Press it again. You can keep going, but it stops now. It's like Jet Set Willy where he falls off the cliff. Okay, so anyway, you can, or Manic Mine or whatever it was. Anyway, you can basically um, now go back to the internal filter. And if I show you 73 now, then you'll see that that is only capable of going to three. If we can go up, can't go down any further. All right. So for the internal filter, set it for zero on parameter 93. Okay. Or you can set this away if you want. For the purposes of the video, as I said, I've set it for 2.5 or 25. Okay. Nice one. So now I'm going to go over some different samples I've recorded. Um, I'm not really a fan of sampling breakbeats, but I did do one just for reference. I didn't do an Amen, I did a Funky Drummer. Um, and also did my Behringer RD6 uh, because I wanted to see how it dealt with hi-hats. High frequencies are always kind of the issue with samplers, in my opinion. And then, or at least with, um, with uh, DSP, with digital signal processing. Um, and then also I wanted to check out the 808. So I did the RD8 anyway, the Behringer clone. And I also did a 101. And the 101, the last sample, I applied a filter envelope just because we should hear the Mirage filter envelope on at least one sample. And then that's it. So yeah, the samples are coming up next. If you want to so just bypass this bit and go to SoundCloud, because you want a better quality recording to listen to, then I'll link that in the comments below. Thank you.